Now you don't have to worry about it falling off. Ouch. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Sweet Machine Channel. All right, hang loose, right, Chaz. Today it's going to be part two, supplemental, peripheral, whatever you want to call it. This is probably going to be a very boring episode, okay? So if you guys not up until the end just to watch the funnies, that's cool. No hate here. Love you guys. Today we're going to do four uh, little bits and bobs buttoning this thing up. The next episode beyond this will be part three, which will be the installation of the new engine. Uh, the time of this recording, hopefully that'll be in a couple of weeks. So hopefully by the time you see this episode, we'll have already gotten it back and started taping that episode. It gets very confusing, so don't even bother to try to figure it out. Okay, right, so four things today. Electrical, two, fuelage, three, steerage, and four, clutchage. Yes, not necessarily in that order. So, let's dig in and let's get to work. Right, so, ground here. Go big or go home. That's right, we're using inch and a half electrical tape, yes. Like that, there, okay. Ground really doesn't need protection, but I suppose. I suppose. Oh, you stupid tape. Okay, well, we'll just use cutting devices for this. So right now we're wiring up the low headlight circuit and the markers. Technically, you should put the marker lights on one circuit, I think, and the headlights on another circuit, but 500 miles and it's gonna go through a fuse and a relay, so we're just gonna send it. Okay, so that's high beam. That's the other high beam. This is the common ground. So, wrap all the grounds up first, because I don't know. Did, ooh! The horn! Let's test the horn! Battery, if you please, doctor! <laughs> ah. Alright. Okay. And then, just for funsies, we'll test the horn here. It worked so much, it threw my uh, knife off. Excellent. Oh, turn lights. Yes. Yes. Those would be next. So I took a look at the manual. One's marker and one's turn, which means it's grounded to the frame. Yeah, there's no rust on here. I figured I'd run a ground strap to them. Oh, goody. This is gonna be fun. Said no one ever. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. That's, that penetron oil did not get in there that well. Oh well. But now, we can ground it out there. Eyelets, if you please. Oh, those are big. Well, that'll work. That'll work out fine. So I, what I usually do is take these blue things off. And we just solder it on there. Perfect. Observe. Crimp here. There we go. See, now it's nice and crimped. Nice and crimped, now we just solder. Soldering gun below so the heat rises up. There we go. Perfect. It's so got one eyelet that's perfectly soldered. Now you don't have to worry about it falling off. Ouch. So even if we gotta take the lens off, we don't have to worry about our ground strap. 
I don't think. She'll just barely clear. I'm just amazed at myself. <laughs> Moving on. Stringing. This time you better know what. Stringing. Oh, wow. Okay, round strap there. That's nice. Zip tie that later. Right about. There, would you say? Sure. Sure. Really. So let's see what circuits are left intact. See if the little rodents give us a little bit of mercy at least. All right, grounding, jump cables, jump leads, as you guys say in the old country. Okay, here goes nothing. Hey, look at that. I'm going to assume that's, hey, that's marker. Hey, look at that. We have linkage. That's your, so actually if you want to touch them at the same time, this would simulate at nighttime when you're making a turn. Yeah, check that out. Amazing, these bulbs still work. So far, I haven't ran into a single one that hasn't worked yet on the front side. We haven't gotten to the back yet, but... Sweet! Let's try the other side. Here we go. We got turns on that one, too. That's our turn light. There we go. Yep, yep, that works. Oh, be darn. The, both the markers and turns work, too. Look at that! It's amazing! Fortunately, my gauge cluster doesn't want to come out. Which probably means I gotta drop the steering column down. Well. Fine, whatever. Wanna clear it now? Hey, there we go. Oh, more rat's nests. Oh yeah, we even got more rat's nest clippings here. That's the bugger we're after. That's our light switch. Target A acquired. There we go. Nice. Now we can pull the whole switch out. Oh. Yeah. To the air compressor. A lot cleaner. Uh, I'm off camera. I'm gonna vacuum all this junk up here in the meantime. Right, so got the front all hooked up to the switch. On, off, on, off, on, off. Now I need to wire up the rear. And of course, I still don't trust the wiring, so we're gonna run our own wiring from here over to here. And I was at the store spending money I don't have on this project. This, these wires say tail lights on them. One of them trailer fancy kits. You got the four in one deal, you got the left turn, you get the right turn, you got the tail lights, you need to grind, you put your left foot in, put your left foot out, right? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run trailer wire from the back to the front or the front to the back, whichever one. Right. Let us string this out. There we go. Huzzah! Well, that didn't work out. Probably leave you guys out there. I'm gonna take a second. Find a magical pathway from the front to the back. Ooh, ouch. Ooh. Ooh, I felt that one. Right. Stringing of the wire. I'm getting stuck. Ugh. Right, so I got dangling down there. Ran it right up through the, the, the bed here. All the way to the back. And then it goes on to here. Without ruining my camera. Comes out to here, out to there. And now we just need to put it into the cab right up here. How shall we do that? Stand by. Think about. I think I found a hole where I can put it inside the cab. Lovely feature. Pluff. 
yeah, yeah. There we go. Right, you might be saying to yourself, oh, wait, Swede, when you got the copper right here, why are you paint all that copper to go all the way back there when you can use this and just lop it off on the other side? No, because I don't know what all else it ties into it without deconstructing the electrical diagram, and that is not happening. It's because I'm making my own wiring harness because of this. See, I mean, the wire, the mouse has gotten in here too, but where does this even go? What? I just... No. No, 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 no. I'm not risking fires. No. Forget it. We're getting our own wiring harness. It'll be just fine. Okay, so we've got the lightage all done. Show you some of my beautiful handiwork here. That's all of our tails, markers, and blinkers. I'll show you guys that in a second. I'll, I'll tuck all this up in a bit. Then, of course, the front. Here is the front here. Oh, yeah. We got the rat's nest back. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. I might put a longer bolt in here and put these all over here and then the main starting wire and the main wires will go here that goes with the starter. So, and the alternator. So, I know it looks incredibly awful and to be honest, it is. <laughs> so, we've got an ignition relay, got a fuel pump relay, which we're going to dive into that here in a second. And then of course, we will have all of our fuses for our turns, our ignition, our brakes, and headlight relay. It's all in here, so, you know, she's uh, she does have some protection, so that's good. There's my wire loom that goes from the rear to the firewall over there. Again, this is just 500 miles, 300 miles, 200 miles, five, I don't know. It's just enough to get them home up to Washington from here in our state of Oregon. So we got the ignition coil locked up here. Uh, yes, the ignition wire will go to the ballast resistor. We're going to bypass a transistorized switch right here, and we'll just put an extra big ballast resistor in here. We'll just run this guy directly off the points in the distributor. So we don't have to worry about that being good or not. So, lights. Pull out the switch. There we go. Excellent. Now, if we reach in here, it just breaks. There we go. Then we should have some turnage. There we go. Still got some brakes to turn. Yep. Yeah. And then the other one. Perfect. And surprisingly, the tail, one of the license uh, light plates still works. So that's a good feature. And of course, there is the front. Excellent. Right, coming to you from the side angle. Now we're going to drop the fuel tank. Number one, I need to get to the fuel sender, take a look at the fuel pump, probably pull it off and see if any of these spins. I'll probably replace on that. So he is guaranteed a good pump on the way home. I don't have to put a little click clicky, noisy clicky clacky uh, tank on the front fender, just a fuel filter. So I gotta drop this down, and I also have to take take a look at the sending unit to make sure that it's still going to give the gay fuel gauge accuracy. So I gotta hand it to the Japanese. You guys did it right with this one. We got an actual drain plug right there. <laughs> um, yeah, you usually don't see that on any tanks whatsoever. So it's a quick drain feature, which will be really nice. Now you might be saying to yourself, yeah, but it's a bit of you because you can scrape stuff and the, the, the bolt will come off and you'll lose all your fuel. Hello! That's what skid plates are for. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that didn't sound good. That didn't sound gooder. That gas is pretty darn clear. Well, now I'm getting nervous as far as how much fuel is actually going to be in here. That's pretty darn clear. I wonder if this thing was only 
licensed 10 years ago, but it was only put away a few years ago. So actually, I think I'm going to save on this gas. I was just going to dump this kerosene into a five-gallon bucket and uh, take a few cups and burn it in my car, you know, just to safely dispose of it, just burn it up, you know, dilute it. Uh, but this gas looks clean enough. I think we're going to actually extract and save on it in the can. So, this would be a little bit cleaner way of doing it instead of pouring into a five-gallon bucket. I figured we'll use the old siphon hose. So, here we go. Oh, nuts! My th my extractor broke off. It I'm supposed to have one of these. That's where the marble is for the suction action, right? It's lost in the... You've got to be kidding me. Seriously, I think I am the only YouTuber that has all these problems. There it is, right there. You guys see that little shiny right there? It's stuck in there. Well, I'm gonna... This is the bottom of the tank. I guess we gotta pull the tank off now. I just... What is that? About two, three gallons? About the three gallon mark. Looks like I was wrong. This thing will be full. Typical. Well, hopefully that'll mean there's not much moisture in the tank. It's definitely got a like, yellow hue to it, though. Definitely got a like, yellow hue to it. You guys won't be able to see it, but maybe pull the buckets out and take a closer look. Yeah, she's uh, she's definitely got some age to her. As to what specific age, I'm not sure. So this tank was at least half, a little over halfway full. You will never find a tank that is empty. Most of the time, we gotta do this. Yeah, she's. She's got plenty of juice in her. I'm getting lightheaded. I think I'm gonna have to let this air out for a little bit. Woo! Anywho. And now for some fuel tank of the drop edge. Hmm. Rocks. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Well, number one over here. Whoa, we're just getting out of control. One what? One what, dear boy? One more to do habits. She might be saying to yourself, sweet, what are you doing in your weird little mind? What are you doing dropping a fuel tank? Get it in, get it rebuilt, and send it! We really don't have much to do on the pickup right now other than button up peripherals and make sure this nuts and works. So, this is why I dropped it as well. Number one, uh, we'll probably go ahead and just replace on the fuel pump. So, we don't have to worry about him breaking down on the next, on I-5, going home, because this thing's been sitting for a long time. It's not a bad idea. Number two, the mice have been in here. And I can't really tell which wires they are unless I drop the tank. So, we can't even use the electric tank in here unless I had to drop it, so. This is the fuel management portion of the show. Ooh. Down to one. Can we do it? Are we feeling lucky? Nope, I am not. Mmm. I got a better idea. One floor down, please. Just hold on a second. No. Oh, she's not gonna. No, she's stripped. That's nice. Okay. Plan B goes into effect.
Plan B has worked. Somewhat sufficiently. Ooh. There you be. We need people, if you want to abandon cars for a long time, just fill the tank full of gas. At least it won't rust out. I mean, this setting unit looks really good. Go ahead and we'll test on the float. We'll hook it up to some electricity. Just put an ohm meter, make sure the fuel gauge is gonna read. Probably replace the fuel pump here. That's this little doohickey. You can buy, you can buy the whole strainer assembly, but it's like a couple hundred dollars, it's nuts. So that's not what we're gonna do. I'm going to try to disassemble this as best I can and put just the new motor on it. And we should be good to go. So, part run. Hold up. We gotta go fishing. I don't recommend eating this fish, though. Aha. There you are. Whoa, hold up. Stop, 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 stop. Right there, hold up, hold up, hold up, whoa, 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 whoa. I was a 90s child. Technically, I was born in the 80s. Um, so that explains probably why I'm so screwed up. <laughs> My childhood memories mostly consisted of the 90s. In fact, 98% of them, I'm sure, are, so. What have I just dropped on my head as a child? Mom? Or father? I need lightage. So how's beams on over here, Sven, yeah? Sven has approved, yeah? Here's we go. The, oh. Yeah, she's got some rusted dinner. Not terrible, though. I'll give you guys a peek in a second. Right now, I wanna go fishing. All right. Huh? Uh -huh. Come to Papa. Oh. And there we have it. Yay. Hmm. She's pretty darn clean. Let's take a look. She's pretty well clean on the inside, actually. We got some debris running around here. So that's, uh, permanently staying there but we got a few few chunkies there floating but not bad otherwise the tank looks pretty good excellent right so the Sweden machine is going to go to the pot stores and pick up the nudes pump yeah so I'll be back in a little bit technically it'll be tomorrow oh <gasps> spoilers behind the scenes oh you guys knew that already I mean look it's dark outside look at my windows it's dark outside it's time for my bedtime because I need to get up for work tomorrow no, I don't mean this thing. I think I mean my actual job. So, O-ring's a little flat, but she's not in bad condition. So, I went to my local parts store. Apparently, this electrical pump, not that easy to find. There's a universal pump. But then, Trans M and I were starting to do the math. Or as you guys say in your, the math. Uh, this thing's only good for about 3 PSI. That Weber, I think we're going to be putting a 32, 36, or 34, 36, 38. I don't know. Uh, we'll be putting the Weber modification on it. And uh, we realize this thing doesn't pump out enough. That Weber needs 4 PSI uh, regulated to run. So we're going to take this out. Going to put a just a simple pull tube down here. Shove it back into the tank and shove it back into the truck and work on the next supplemental thing that we have to do while we're getting the, while we're waiting for the engine to be finished. So let's tear this apart and put it back together again the wrong way. Try to test on this. This would be our level sensor device. And uh, up here, it uh, measures and bounces around on the ohm meter, but once you drop about to here and all the way down below, meter goes down to zero. So let me bring this to the microphone and I'll show you how crunchy it sounds when it's all in the up position. Yeah, either the wiper or the coils on the resistor device is gone. So, he's gonna have to do the math when he's going on his way home. 
If I'm really, if I'm feeling really charitable, I might give him a five gallons of gas. But we'll see. So, we're just going to forget about the float. Forget about the wires. And we're just going to work on this little pickup tube you see here. Okay, let's get rid of this. There. Okay. Eh, let's give him a new hose. I think he's been submerged in 35-year-old, 35... -year -old, 35 Years worth of gas, so let's just get another one. Oh, look at that! Fits nicely. I need to zoom back down here. You guys don't have to see my ugly face. Right, so put it in through here. There. Put it nice. Is this is this stainless steel? It's just stainless. All right. Very good. Slide a little bit more up, eh? Technically, it's not pressurized anymore to suction, so this is probably completely unnecessary. But, you know. So, you know. Completely overkill on some parts. And then other areas, we barely scrape by. That sounds like some good logics right there. And now for some copper coil. Mm -hmm. This would be a quarter inch outside diameter. So let's see here. About there, I say. Yeah. Cut, cut to the length of where my thumb stops. Right, mark that down. There we go. Make sure you throw, make sure you throw, throw your cutter on the ground. Smack it around, make sure it doesn't rust up and seize up on you. Make sure you get a lot of nice metal copper shards in here for your uh, new pump to plug up. <laughs> Basically, bottom of the tank, there's your suction tube. I'll get them home at least. Pretty rock solid. She should be in there for quite a long time. Nice. Now for the reinsertimentation. Now I already see a problem. Well, that's not gonna work. Well, oh, yeah. this one goes in first, and then here. There you go. And then can I get the float in there next? Oh, this is gonna be exciting. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Found a machine screw in my little pile from my stripped out one. That'll work. Completely wrong washer. And it's a standard, not a Phillips. <laughs> He's not gonna know what hit him. Wait a minute. If I upload this, but he's bringing the engine back from the machine shop. Ooh, this could get tricky. yet no we got two more subsections of this supplemental part two priming it and getting ready to go okay we got the electricals we got the fuelage we need to take a look at the clutch system and tie rod yeah that's gonna be fun let's see the tie one for tie rod for the very end so on to the next so trans am and i before we took the motor out, we were playing with everything, the knobs, the buttons, being little boys and pulling levers and pushing them and see which gets frozen, which ones break and which ones don't work at all. We discovered that the clutch pedal was pretty easy to push down, very little to no resistance. And then the clutch wasn't actuating or linkage was broken or leaks in the hydraulic system. Who knows? We, we, at first we, Pushed it down and went, oh, that seems awful easy. Like pushing on the gas pedal. It was a little too easy. 
So, we dug into it a little bit and we found a little problem. Right, so, first thing to do with these hydraulic systems is you want to check the reservoir. You got your master cylinder for your brakes, another master cylinder for your brakes, and the clutch master cylinder. This is the bugger that we're after. And wouldn't you know it, it's empty. Investigating. So, what that basically means is, we've got a leak here in the master, or a leak in the slave, which is right down here, right there, okay? Which one it is, I don't know. So this stuff is basically hydraulic, it's brake fluid, which is your hydraulic fluid. It's brake fluid, it's very corrosive, so you're looking for a lot of rustage. I don't see a lot of rustage down here. Um, it looks okay-ish. I remember you got engine oil being slung up in here, so you really can't tell. See how well this comes off. Ooh. Well, no snappage there. That's good. Oh yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Job, I think I've got it. Perfect. Right. Extracting. Woo. Ah, she's. She's original people. You just can't find them like this anymore. So, out with the old, and with the new. And here's the goals. It all looks so beautiful, Gloria, yes. We even get a new cap, that's cool. It looks good. Sweet, installing. Oh yeah, she's solid now. Perfect. Woo! That had some leakage. So, it looks like the slave cylinder was a problem after all. Observe. You guys can see that or not. There you go. Yep. There's no oil supposed to be in that boot. It's supposed to be on the other side. So, slave cylinder was bad. Replacing. That's what we do. The new guy. Put it in here thusly. Flip it 180. Turn it right side up. 10,000 more steps. Boom, there you go. Are you going in? Of course you're not, why would you be? How is this possible? It's easy, it's my channel. Everything will go awry, just like that. You stupid meanie head. There we go. Tightening back down. That's good. Don't get too crazy. That is aluminum after all. Aluminium, excuse me. So hydraulic line. 
Well, this one's a little different. I think the other one's right like this. This one's actually off to the side. Oh, that's going to be... <sighs> That'll be exciting to see how I'm going to fix that. So, because my cinematography skills are such excellent, all I did was grab my adjustable tube bender, put it in here, and went nah, nah, nah. So instead of coming in the straight, came off to the side. So now we got a nice little professional looking end to the slave cylinder. Excellent. Transam and I sat down the other day looking at this pickup. Uh, when after or soon after we got it, before we pulled the engine. And we were wondering why the tow in or tow out was so extreme. And they have not shown on camera even if we took pictures, but visually we can tell those tires were bowed, either they're towed out or towed in. I can't remember. Um, they may have been towed in, and you could tell if these tires were on the road, they'd be chirping and barking and putting very uh, excessive wear on them. So then I got to, so after he left, I got to looking at it a little bit more and realized that rod looks a little bent. I think we may have to replace the steering relay rod. Let me pull the old one out and I'll show ya. You guys gotta love this. Four. Right, so here is the baddie one. So you can see. <laughs> Somebody hit something a while back and put a nasty bow in it. Let's take a look at what a good one looks like. So this guy came all the way over from Colorado. Brand new used new relay rod. <laughs> Look at that difference. Yowzers. I mean, that's... That's pretty severe bowing right there. So I think we found our issue with our toe-in and toe-out alignment. Reinstalling. On this side. There we go. That might go in here. This will go in here. Hey, Fitz! Look at that! Oh, that's beautiful. You forced me to play Dante. Charging up the Duga! Right, the other Duga machine has been charged. Here we go. And yeah, you have it. Right, so, new steering, new used steering relay rod has been installed. Let's take a look at the wheels, at least on camera, and see if they look more straight. You guys didn't see it before comparison. I'm not sure if it would have shown up, but let's take a look afterwards and see what it looks like. Right, so, there's tire number one, pretty much straight ahead. Pretty much even side on the fenders there. Against the outer part of the wheel, that looks straight. And that one's way off. I'm not surprised. Tire shop must have compensated for that at some point. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's a little towed in a little too much on that side. But that's what tire shops are for. They'll put on the alignment rack and we'll get a good all off camera. I'll adjust that tow out enough to drive it. But yeah. <laughs> She's gonna need a little bit more help on that old alignment rack. Come on. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching part two of the episode of getting this magnificent Hilux back on the road. I really appreciate the likes you've been giving on those videos to you guys. I really appreciate it. I'll tell you straight up, 
I'm not one of those guys well, that'll say, click, like, subscribe, and all that, comment below, and all of those things. If you guys want the channel to grow and me get my hands dirty and a whole bunch of more fun cars, which we do plan to do, but if you want to accelerate that process, I mean, feel free to click the buttons if you want. It does, I do watch those, and it, it does help me keep me motivated to keep on uh, bringing you more fabulous content. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. I will catch you in the next episode. Them headlights are dirty. Uh-oh, fire went out. Hey, is this thing empty? Oh, criminy. If we come to Angley, do it, check this out. We have blinkage. Time it right, time it right. If I hook this up right, we should have headlights, front marker lights, and front side front marker lights. Wow, that was awful. Now it's recording. Beep, beep, up. There we go. Beep, beep, beep. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I ran out of zip ties. You got. Ah. Back on up. There we go. Right. Right. Uh, how much would be in there after you get done, or before you re Wow, that was awful. Really? You done already? Come on. Chop, chop. Ooh, that was almost machine-like precision. That's how we break cameras and tripods, ladies and gentlemen. Gosh darn it, now I got my hands all good. My magnet won't take that lid off. I had this all memorized. <laughs>